Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and hit record and we're going to get started. So I just barely sent out an email for all of you to let you guys know that both tonight and tomorrow I do have lectures planned, but I'm going to be opening up time for, it's almost kind of an open lab kind of thing. If you want to come in and get some feedback or some critiques on your final project, if you want to get some feedback on your logos from week three, if you need help on any assignments that you're behind on, please bring your work and we'll do it in class together. Um, this is a great chance for you to get some one-on-one -on -one time with me. I would like to try to be as available as possible. And I figure what better way to do that than the two-hour window that we have tonight and tomorrow. So hopefully you guys take advantage of that. Again, I sent out an email letting you guys know. I'll post it in the announcements so tonight doesn't work out for your schedules. Hopefully tomorrow night there'll be a good turnout. All right, there's no one in class right now, so we'll go ahead and talk about this. I'll just talk to you from home since you're watching this. Uh, week four, the final assessment. This is our only assignment this week. Usually you're used to the structure of two assignments. We have an assignment and an assessment to do. So two different grades, but we only have one uh, assignment for this week. It is due this Saturday. I posted an announcement, and I'll just go to that real quick so that you guys are all aware Hopefully you're getting these announcements and these emails from me. I wanted to talk to you at the late uh, last week. This is the last week to turn in your late work. Um, week four sneaks up really fast, and so sometimes we're a little, if we get behind earlier in the month, it's hard to play catch up. So please be aware that this Saturday is the last day to turn in any week three late work. I'm no longer accepting week two or week one work. So if you are behind on that, unfortunately, as for college policy, I'm not able to accept anything past one week and deadline. So please, please, please try to get your work in. Also, I don't accept late discussions. I know some of you uh, have tried to submit discussions um, past the deadline. Unfortunately, there is no making that up. Um, discussions, as I've explained at the very beginning of class and also in the syllabus, is the way that I take attendance in class. So if you're not present during that week's discussion, then, I'm, then there's no way to make that up since you weren't there. Um, it just wouldn't be fair to all the other students who did make an effort to be there and be uh, active and participate. So if you do need extra credit points though, you have to just do four, uh, if you do more than four daily checkpoints in a week, the rest is, is extra credit, so that's five points here and there. Also, be sure to do your assessment three. It's just meeting uh, with your tutor in the tutoring center for 15 minutes. Uh, no need to turn anything in. You just need to talk to them about your final project and get some feedback on it. And um, feel free to ask any questions that you'd like, of course. But you don't have to submit anything to me. Uh, they will email me and notify me that you were there. They'll also email me about what you guys talked about. So if you were there and for 15 minutes and it was relevant, then I can get an automatic 50 points. So please take advantage of this opportunity because this is a great way to um, – kind of keep your grade up and also stay current with the assignments. And no appointment is necessary. I've gotten a few emails. I know people are frantically trying to figure out how to get this last minute assignment in. Um, if you have not done it yet, uh, there is no appointment necessary in the tutoring center. Though you are allowed to talk to your AD or to uh, Ms. Porch, who is our class tutor. If you're unable to reach anyone, though, please don't wait around for a response. The tutoring center does not require an appointment. You don't need to email them ahead of time. You can just go open lab hours. So go there, talk to someone, and any tutor will do, and then email me back. Or they will email me back. You don't have to email me. Um, but that should be pretty easy to do. Okay, so for the assignment, I wanted to just read over this with you. Um, it's going to come up fast, even though it looks pretty short, even though we have one. Please don't be, um, please don't assume it's going to be quick. Um, I've given you all some very in-depth critiques on your week three logos. By the way, you guys did an awesome job. It's really hard to turn out four stunning logos, and usually the first couple drafts anyways are, are rough drafts, but I thought you guys did a great job, and so you can be very proud of your work. I hope, I tried to explain that and communicate that, that uh, you did some, some good work. 
I was giving a lot of feedback and critiques because it is part of our final assessment, not because I didn't like it or because it was all wrong, just because I wanted to give you as much feedback for the assessment as possible. Now, I've also received some emails and some students asking questions, hey, you said your favorite was this logo, do I need to use that logo for my final? No, not necessarily, but I was trying to let you know that my favorite was the one that took the least amount, uh, will take the least amount of work for the final project. I highly recommend you go with the logo that I gave you critiques on so that you know exactly what I'm looking for. If you choose to go with a different logo that I didn't give feedback on, you're going to need to get some feedback from a tutor or from, from me. You can email me and I'd be happy to give you some feedback. But I, to save everyone some time, I was trying to go with the logo that would take the least amount of time for you on your end. So I picked a logo that was close to being finished and I just needed some polishing and final touches. Um, but you will need to, to pick one. You don't need to do all four. So one example of the logo, you need to show it in color. You've already done that, so that job is over. Just make those changes. Apply those changes that I, I gave you to your color logo. Then you need to convert it to black and white. This is not grayscale, okay? This is different. Black and white is simply black and white. There should be no shades, no shades of black, no grays, nothing like that. All black and white. Okay, and I'll show you an example of how to do that. You will need to, um, it does require you to take out the color and replace it with black and white, but that, that's pretty easy. And that, that's why we've, I've been placing so much importance on make your logo simple, make it, um, make it take out the detail. I, I know that we think that we have to have a lot of um, intricate detail on our icons or our vectors, but we really don't. The simpler it is, the easier it will be to convert it to black and white. And then you want to show an example of the logo in a horizontal layout, and an example of the logo in a vertical layout. And I'll explain to you that difference, but I will be looking for those, those things. And lastly, once you have your finalized logo, you will be required to create one business card. And you can make out make up the contact info. It doesn't have to be your real contact information, but you do need to put real info in there. Um, and then we're going to go over today how to do the one Facebook icon and four cover images. We're going to talk about that a little bit and why it's important, especially for businesses. And then you're going to turn in your final assessment as a multi-page PDF. Okay, it says or zipped folder. However, I would prefer. PDF so that it's not um, so it's easier and quicker for me to grade. If it's in a zip folder, I have to wait for it to download. It just takes a long time. So you can get lost. Hey, Lisa, thank you for coming. It's great to have you. We are just going over the fourth assignment. Lisa, did you have any questions about the final assignment? I know you just uh, arrived, so if questions arise, just feel free to let me know. Also, I was uh, reminding everyone, and you can catch the first few minutes of the lecture, but if you want to bring your assignment, your final project, if you want to go over it in class, that's what I'm leaving this class time open to do. If you want to review it, go over it in any way. If you're not prepared today, then we can do it tomorrow. Okay, and you have a question on last week's assessment. Yeah, go for it, Lisa. Would you uh, rather have the mic on so you can talk and you have to text? While I'm waiting for... Oh, you didn't get credit for it? Okay. Misty probably didn't email me. Um, I will make your, I'll, I'll adjust that right now. I'll take care of your grade. So thank you for letting me know. If any of you, and that brings me to another point, if you went and saw the tutor, I noticed that a lot of you didn't take advantage of that opportunity. But if you did go, and for some reason the tutor or the associate dean or whoever you saw didn't usually the tutoring center will email me automatically but um, if you went to see anyone else outside of the tutoring center like misty porch 
our cost tutor or an AD, then they most likely probably didn't email me. So unless they notify me, um, if you have a zero and you shouldn't for that assignment, let me know and I can make that correction. At least I'll take care of that tonight for you, okay? Just check your grade in the morning and it should be up. Yeah, and I'm sure she was. She's, it's crunch time right now for everyone. Everyone's mod ends at the same time, so she's pretty swamped, I'm sure. I'm glad you could talk about it. How did you feel? Um, did you like her? Was she, was she helpful? Good. She was awesome. Good. I'm so glad that she was helpful. It's, um, it, she's, she's been great. She's been the class tutor since I've been teaching and she's, she's pretty great. We like her. Good. I'm glad you had a chance to go in and get some answers to your questions. Okay. So that, uh, concludes the final assi assessment. This is our only assignment this week. However, as you can see, you've got about six bullet point things that you're going to have to check off. And those um, are, are in the grading rubric, so please be sure they weigh heavily. This final assignment is worth 200 points. I'm going to need to adjust the points on the grading rubric, but please know that this is worth 200 points, so it's a huge part of your grade. Don't waste your time with a 50-point assignment if you are going to just get a zero on your final assessment. Make sure this gets turned in. This is priority, okay? Yeah, this final, we're going to talk about Facebook icons. Lisa was just reminding me that she needs to know what Facebook icons are. We're actually going to talk about that today, and we're going to go over some design tutorials. I'm going to be talking less today and doing more design. Um, I think that we would all prefer that and have more fun doing it, but this way we can get some practice at it. And I'd really like you guys to work with me because I... Uh, I think that we learn better that way. I'll do a demo and then I'll turn time over to you. Or if you can work as I'm talking, if that's easier to, I can slow it down if I know you're trying to follow along. All right, well, we'll end here. I'm gonna go straight to our uh, PowerPoints. We're gonna talk about what Facebook icons are. I'm gonna show you what Facebook covers are, and then we'll go into our design right away, all right? And please stop me in the middle of the lecture if you have any questions. This is kind of new for some of you. Are you familiar with, with faith, Facebook, Lisa? I'm pretty sure most all of us know what Facebook is and have used it at some point. I know the younger crowd is, is more familiar with it. Do you use Facebook at home, guys? Yeah, you have one, but that can, can be confusing. Yeah, I, I agree. It's hard to know what's what. I mean, we, we only are on, uh, if you're like me, I'm on Facebook just for the social aspect of it, not to, not to know the ins and outs of what things are called. So um, yes, it can be a little confusing. All right, so let's talk about that, okay? Okay, so first of all, what you guys need to know, and uh, we're going to watch a quick video to show you um, kind of the approach to the new timeline format of Facebook. This was implemented about 2013, I believe. Some of the new features came about. What you should know um, will include how to do a cover image, how to do a profile picture, and how to create any tab images below the timeline cover if you want to. That's not necessary for this, um, for this assignment, but I have a video that will kind of give an introduction of what a Facebook cover is, how to kind of go about it, everything that's above the fold. And when Facebook rolled out timeline for Facebook pages, many businesses felt like the rug was kind of pulled out from under them. Um, but now that people are getting used to the new layout, brands and businesses are working toward building and setting up the best possible page that they can. So to my understanding, Facebook has made it clear that their goal is to give brands and businesses more freedom to express themselves on their pages. And they do have a few rules that we'll go over today, design rules, but for the most part, this, um, this video is going to cover two major essentials. 
uh, to get a handle on the new timeline layout. So first is the cover photo, and that's what we're going to be talking about because that's part of our assignment. This is a large piece of real estate, and it can be very beneficial to businesses. It measures about 851 pixels wide and 315 pixels tall. And I'll shrink these down so you can see. Okay, so this is your cover photo. You, you've seen this before, Lisa, on your, your own personal page, I'm sure. You've got, and you probably never even knew it. You had a cover photo here, and then you have your profile picture that you can update. Yeah, so we're familiar with the layout of Facebook, so don't let this assignment intimidate us. This is what this is called, though. So your, your profile or your icon is this small little square. Okay, it's 170 pixel or I guess it's 180 by 180. Somehow when you upload it, it will shrink to 160 by 160, but if you keep it a true square, it, it'll stay proportionate. Okay, cool. So Lisa is saying that her profile picture is a Dallas Cowboy helmet. Mine is a picture of my family, and um, cover photo um, is, is usually a background of something, and that's because this is our personal, this is our personal page. And we're, what we're doing is we're taking our logo. So Lisa, for example, I'll ask Lisa, what logo did you design? What client did you choose for assignment three? Affordable Lawn Care. Okay, so we'll use that as an example. So Affordable Lawn Care was the company that Lisa chose. So in this case, you would probably want to design for the cover photo a, a landscaping layout. Think of it like a billboard layout almost. We want very minimal. Have you taken a class that's talking about billboard design at all? If not, don't worry, we won't get into the ins and outs of it, but billboards are just simple in, in design. You have very little text, and it's mostly image that's supposed to catch the attention. Had it already, so you know. So if you think in terms of designing a cover photo like a billboard, then it kind of simplifies the process a little bit. You, you need a really cool picture, mostly. I mean, it needs to be a really cool piece of photography, or um, or about your product or your service, whatever your company has uh, happens to be. In this case, it's Lisa, so you might want to show a picture of a landscape yard or some grass or something that will that relates to your type of company, to your industry, what it is that your services are being promoted. And then the profile picture, the icon, the small square down here, is usually the picture of the logo or some icon that um, is easily recognizable or in sync with your company. So usually the photography is in the cover photo and the logo is in the profile um, or the icon. Does that make sense? As far as placement, and we'll go over this a ton. I'm gonna continue, that's basically our entire lecture is going over what this is and how to tackle it. Okay, I have a quick video I wanna show you. So let me see if I can get that pulled up. And Okay, it's gonna be kind of hard to see it. Well, let me um, make the video big. So what I'm gonna do, there we go. That's what I wanted. Perfect. Okay, so let me um, share the screen and we'll watch it. Let me know if sound is, is good. Just give me a smiley face. Okay. So I'm going to unplug, these, um, unplug this section, get this started, and let me know if you can hear it. I am your host, Bilal Khan, and you are watching this fantastic show on how to kick it with digital marketing. In can this video, it? I am going to be showing you how to navigate this new overhaul that Facebook has done, uh, which is the timeline. Facebook has recently converted everyone, whether you're a Facebook page or profile, into this new timeline format. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to address is the cover image. This is going to be your first impression for any person. You want to be able to place a cover that looks good, but one of the things you also got to keep in mind are the dimensions of this uh, timeline. The first thing is the image itself has got to be 851 pixels by 315. If your image is smaller than that, then it will be stretched so that it will fit the space. Now, in the stretching process, things might get distorted or blurry. 
just know that each time you change your cover image, it's going to show an update in the newsfeed of everyone who has liked your page. Now, keep in mind, there are some rules and guidelines that you need to follow in regards to the cover, uh, the timeline cover. You cannot put your contact info or a call to action um, in, in that timeline um, or arrows pointing to like or share. Oh, yeah, just in case, if you don't know how to change your cover, when you hover over the cover image, it says change your cover. You can click there, and you can choose from your photos or upload a photo. And when it's uploaded, you can reposition it. Or simply, if you don't like this photo, you can get rid of it and have no timeline cover image. But I do not recommend that. The other thing is uh, the profile image. One thing you'll have noticed recently is that Facebook made a change where that profile image has been made bigger. Before, the picture was about 125 by 125 pixels square image, and now it's been increased to 160 by 160, um, which is great. Now you can uh, make your photo image bigger. Some of the people, including myself, we use something called the landing tab. So that way, if you're a new visitor to the Facebook page, uh, they would be automatically redirected to a specific tab in the timeline. And uh, when that would happen is uh, you could uh, kind of encourage people to either like your page or you know, subscribe to an email list or anything else. Um, and that is now gone. And one thing that, uh, and a lot of people have been groaning about that. What you can do, however, is take advantage of your cover image. Uh, be creative with it. And also take advantage of your uh, three main tabs below your cover image. Uh, make it compelling. Uh, so that people can click through it. So I'll give you an example of what I've done here. Uh, for example, one of the things I'm doing is I'm uh, running an internship. I'm actually uh, accepting applications. So if you want to apply for this new media internship, it's going to be taking place this summer. Um, you can go ahead and click here, Interns Wanted. And when you click that, it's going to redirect to the application page. And from there, you, people can kind of scroll down, look at what the application is, and then go ahead and fill it out. So uh, that's just one example of do it. Let me show you how you can uh, go ahead and create um, your own custom link here. In the Facebook search, I want you to go ahead and search for iframe tab. And go, one of the apps that I like is a static iframe tab by Woodbox. You click on that. From there, you click on install tape, a page tab. Uh, once you click it, um, it'll, it'll say that you can add a tab to a particular page. Once you've added the page tab, it's going to bring you to ask you for authorization. Go ahead and click authorize the tab application. Make sure it, uh, the setting is public. Go to app. Now from here, you, can, uh, have, you have different setting options. Um, it says here enable timeline to be uh, 810 pixels wide. Uh, which is the full width? I would say, yeah, go ahead, do that. Now you want to now you want to change the tab image. Um, this is where you can uh, go ahead and upload an image. For example, let's say I'm making a link to my website, so upload the Lee John logo website, and then from here I wanted to simply redirect to Lee John's Lee John .com. So John .com. and from here. I'll just leave everything else, tab name, I'll call it website. And I click on Save Settings. Now grant permission to this application. Allow. Now my settings have been to save. I can click on View tab, and boom, it brings me to my website. So it works. The next step, once you've created it, you want to put it on above the fold. So scroll down, website. Adjust, and you want it to swap with, let's say, how many people have liked it. When you, when you come back, you'll see that it is updated here. So if I click that, it'll automatically redirect me to the website. Boom. So this, is, this basically covers how you can get started with the Facebook page and setting up your cover and your above-the-fold links on your timeline page. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, give, you can tweet me at on B1. Or okay, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight on what a Facebook cover is and how you go about setting one up. So did you have any questions after watching that video?
No questions? Okay, perfect. So, so as I was saying, the video covers two major essential um, points that it, that it makes about how to get a handle on the new timeline layout. And the first one, like I said, is the cover photo. And that's that large billboard looking box behind your profile picture. It measures 851 by 315 pixels, okay? That's wide and, and tall. This is your opportunity to make a good first impression and to capture the attention of your visitors. And you're not doing this from a personal standpoint, but you're doing this for your client. So for Lisa's client, affordable lawn care, you're gonna be, Lisa, thinking about how you can promote them the best. This is your opportunity to make affordable lawn care shine, okay? To give a good first impression. You want to make sure your cover art is eye candy, not pixelated. And what that means is you've got to grab the viewer's attention, but please choose high enough resolution photos that it doesn't look fuzzy or pixelated at all. So leave a strong first impression. This is, and now if you are working with a real client, most likely you would be working with stock photography or uh, photography from the client uh, being supplied. So most most often than not, it's going to be high resolution. But if you're going on Google finding some pictures, what you need to do is please grab higher resolution photos. So I would say at least this size. Okay, uh, you may not find the exact dimensions, but please don't find anything lower than 800 800 pixels uh, wide and any lower than 300 pixels tall. Okay. So just keep that in mind. The second one is default landing pages are gone. Most tabs uh, or apps that pages had are now outdated. And so the video talked about visitors that are coming for the first time or they're returning. Uh, they'll only see this main page with the cover photo in the wall. So if you want people to click on your apps, um, you'll have to get a little creative. But we're not going to be going into the app side of things like he did. Um, this is just Facebook allows for the customization of tab images. So this is this could be the opportunity to take advantage of this feature within Facebook uh, to potentially drive traffic to wherever you want. And now Lisa asked, do you need to cite our photos uh, for this assignment? No, no, we'll just save you the time. You don't need to cite your photos. Normally, I do ask that you you would, but I think for for this assignment, it's not imperative. If you were using photography for maybe an ad or ad design, then I'd probably say yes, but it's okay for now. Don't worry about it. We won't need to worry about it. Thank you for asking, Lisa. That's a great question. All right, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of, you know, um, hope it helped you understand a little bit of what a Facebook cover is. This is the video if you want to uh, take a snapshot, watch it later, you're welcome to. And this video covered those two essentials I was talking about. So let's talk a little bit about the timeline image, okay? That's the cover photo uh, on the back. Now, if you have a Facebook page for business or for, uh, for your personal, you're gonna need one of these. If not, if you might not even realize that you have one, okay? And Lisa just asked, are you to use InDesign or Illustrator? I would recommend you use Illustrator for this assignment. Yes, um, and here's why. Because you need to create a multi-page PDF at the end. So you're gonna need, you can't have half an InDesign and half an Illustrator because you're gonna need just one PDF document, okay? And the reason why I'm saying Illustrator is because you're gonna be creating and doing your logo designs in Illustrator. So it would make sense to have this set up in Illustrator as well, so you can just hit a quick multi-page PDF on how to upload. And I'll go over how to upload the assignment tomorrow during class. That'll give us um, something to talk about, how to finalize our assignment. Today, we're gonna go over strictly about the Facebook. So tomorrow will be business cards, business card design, and how to upload your final assignment and get it all packaged and ready for me. But today, we're gonna go over how to design the Facebook icon, the Facebook cover, or quite a few different businesses, all right? So you've probably noticed that striking visual piece on Facebook pages, that timeline layout. It's a nearly screen width banner image known as what we call the cover. 
And on March 30th, 2012, all Facebook pages were converted to the timeline layout without with the cover photo. And I remember this very vividly because I did not like it at first. <laughs> when they made these changes, it was, I hate when Facebook makes these ch makes changes. And I feel like they do it so often because I finally get comfortable with the layout of it and the way it functions. And then they go and throw something new, a new feature, or they completely overhaul the look. And it really throws me off my game. I don't like having to relearn how... Um, how it works and, and all that jazz. But you may have noticed that not every cover image is a home run. So if you've seen, if you, and even now I would encourage you pull up Facebook uh, and, and type in a business, a company that you either shop at or a restaurant that you eat at or, oh goodness, um, a product that you like or buy. Why don't you type in the name of the company and Lisa, if you type it in, you can share your screen, show me what you came up with. Um, but look at their cover image and let me know if this, if it's a workable one or if not. Lisa says she wishes there had been a baby company because she has a cute business card that she's got saved. I know. Well, save your business card template because you'll be needing it for this assignment. You may not be able to use the, the baby materials, but you can use the template for sure. And you never know, in another class, there could be an opportunity to use it, so. But uh, anyways, I wanted to talk to you. We're gonna go over the steps, how to create a cover image that looks professional, that makes a really great first impression. And we don't want it to look subpar or amateurish. We're designers and we get paid for this kind of stuff. So we need to learn how to market the brand's best assets. Uh, without violating Facebook page rules uh, or terms. And so there's going to be a list of Facebook rules when you're creating this. So we're going to have to keep that in mind as we're designing for, for the final assessment. Now, while Facebook allows page admins to simply choose a photo from an existing photo album, doing this is probably not going to give your business or your client a professional looking image that makes the business look terrific. Chances are that your existing photos were not composed to take advantage of the unusual shape of a Facebook cover photo. You're also missing out on the opportunity to combine multiple photos and, and text into a full page banner image. And that's what we're doing basically. The Facebook cover, think of it as like an ad or a billboard, okay? You're gonna follow the new Facebook page terms, um, which I'll go over that in just a minute, but before we get into that, I want you to get inspired for a minute, okay? I have uh, some examples here. Let me close out my windows. And I wanna to talk to you about some of these brands, and some of these Facebook covers, what works, what doesn't work, and what these companies were thinking in terms of their, their options. I'm gonna move this chat bar down a little bit. Okay, so I want you to get inspired for a second. Look at the Facebook covers. Um, these cover photos have been around for close to about a, a little over a year now, and brands and businesses all over the world have been coming up with lots of imaginative and innovative ways of showcasing their products or their services with, within the confines of the design. We wanted to gather, um, we want to get to this point as well. We want to be able to come up with a uh, design that can promote our client as best. Oh, perfect. Okay, so Lisa's got a business on Facebook, so I'm going to go ahead and stop share. Lisa, will you please share your screen and show me what you pulled up? Kind of cool. We're in class and we can get on Facebook and it's all part of the assignment, huh? I'm sure we all wouldn't care to admit that we're on Facebook more than we, we should be, but uh, perfect. Okay, so she looked up Hershey's, excellent. So what are some elements that we notice here? It looks like they've got a really cool eye-catching graphic. That's the first thing I see. And then what's in their profile picture or their icon? This looks like their logo, right? Their icon is here at the bottom left, that little square, that's their icon, okay? And that is usually where they put their logo. So think in terms of what you're gonna do for affordable lawn care, Lisa. In that, in that square, you're probably gonna put your logo, right? Your logo design. 
And since you're creating a horizontal or a vertical logo, you can choose which layout you want to put in there. And then you just need some kind of a cool graphic here on the back and maybe some text. Great, great job. All right, so we're going to go back here and we're going to look at some other companies. Excellent. So yeah, it's very cool. Um, let's look at this one. So this is Coke, um, Coca-Cola. They're on the list, uh, as you would fully expect, because their page is always full of great design and fun, happy branding. Feel free to pull up these companies as I'm going over them on Facebook and see if they've changed it since I last pulled these, these photos. But their design is fun, it's happy, um, branding is, is just key. They've got their logo here. Uh, they decided to put their logo, this is the enemy. They decided to put their logo here on their cover, which is fine, but they've also got logo placement on their bottle caps and also on their bottle. So it's full of branding. When you're promoting your logo over and over, this is Brother in Law Works for Pepsi. Oh, how funny. Yes, um, gotta say, I, it's hard to decide which ones taste better, Coke or Pepsi. It kind of depends on my mood, but I always lean towards Pepsi, Pepsi more personally, but hopefully you get some good discounts <laughs> at Pepsi. I'd be in trouble if I had an in-law working or a relative working there. Let's look at another one. This is Red Bull, okay? And I thought this was just really cool. Um, speaking of enemies, Red Bull and Monster Energy drinks kind of seem to be competitors. Now, Red Bull has been getting a lot of attention recently because of their mad space stunt, and its cover photo takes full advantage of this media event and publicity. And so they've got this really cool image um, up in space, and then right next to it, what do you notice in their icon? What do they use for their icon? They, they, well, yeah, bulls, they use the logo. So they use their logo for the icon. So when you're thinking in terms of the final assessment, you're probably going to put your logo right in this icon. This profile picture will be your, um, will be your logo, okay? Speaking of Pepsi, here's to you, Lisa. <laughs> we're gonna get there so Pepsi has a huge following globally and Lisa was just reminding me they don't put aspartame in their drinks anymore for, uh, in the diet drinks so that's a huge plus um, but they have a huge following and it tries to fight back against coca-cola they've been huge competitors for so long um, but they they're doing it with a celebrity lead approach on their page so they're trying to market by using celeb endorsements and uh, it's pretty cool they're very effective marketing uh, very strong brand and you can notice they've got their logo on their can they've got their logo placed here also their icon Pepsi Pepsi is just so widely known has been around for so long that there is really it's kind of like Nike they can drop the the, the actual letter uh, the word Pepsi and just use their icon because it's so recognizable all over the world so this is what they've done. They've done a collage of photos for their cover and then just a, kind of a, a motto or just a one-liner headline for their, for their ad. And just think of it in terms of an ad. That's kind of what you're doing. All right, here's Guinness. Um, Guinness is one of the best known, beer, best known beer brands in the world. And its page makes you, um, it just, it, it almost looks like it's the finer things in life. Um, and so it's, it's structured very well. And though I'm not necessarily a fan of the brand, but I, what I like about it is the icon and the, the logo and how simple the cover is. It's, it's very simple. And they put their icon on there and they're kind of making a statement. Obviously they've got their website down here, but, um, or I guess it's not their website. It's just drink responsibly, but in, their um, profile picture or their icon, they've put their logo, but they've placed it in such a way that it looks like it's part of the image. So that's kind of, kind of a neat feature, something different. So let's, let's look at Monster Energy for a second. 
Now, we talked about Red Bull. Monster Energy has been trying to fight against the might of Red Bull for so long, and its branding is really starting to improve with lots of extreme sports and a great Facebook cover photo. And while I am not a fan of some of these products that are out there, but I love their marketing. I think that they've got a really strong um, brand because they know who they're, target, who they're targeting. They know their target audience, and it's usually the younger, athletic, um, extreme sport kind of people who will go out and grab these kind of drinks. Um, they've got it. Usually, they brand themselves on the equipment or the gear of, of these athletes, okay? And so, this is what Monster is doing. Uh, they've also got, they too have a collage of all different kind of things with subtle placement of their logo, but again, in their icon, Facebook icon, they have their logo in the icon, and that's, that's all that they have. So, please pay attention. This would probably be a great place to put your logo, okay? Are there any questions so far? Let's talk about Fanta. Now, I like Fanta. This is um, I like some of their flavors. Fanta always seems to be doing something completely different to than the other drinks and brands that are out there. And what they're doing is it has this unique 3D experience on their page, which helps them stand out a lot because it's it's something different that's not being done yet, uh, or at least by their competitors anyways. And so they've got this 3D effect, um, and if you wear the glasses, it's supposed to come alive. It's really cool what they're doing. Um, they're trying to make a slam dunk, and I think they have done that very well with their cover image. And then also their, their Facebook icon is their logo, but they've also structured it or placed it in such a way that it flows with the rest of the picture. So that's kind of a neat feature, I think. Sprite, it's another good brand. Sprite's all about that refreshing citrus taste and the design on their cover photo really makes you wanna run out and get a nice bottle of Sprite. And that sounds really good to me right now. So their branding is quite effective. Um, I love how they've placed their logo in the profile icon, or I'm sorry, the uh, profile and icon space. Not only is their logo logo placed, but it's also done in such a way that it's part of the cover photo. And I think that's such a cool um, feature. I think it's really neat that they've they've done that. And the same with Fanta, they've done that too, where the logo image or the profile image is, is kind of part of the picture in the background. So it looks like it's really popping off the page. Ben and Jerry's is another pretty famous brand or should at least say well-known brand. Ben and Jerry's is an ice cream product. They, they've always focused on the cows that they use to create their wonderful ice cream as one of their main marketing images. And so this works for them. Um, it's on their products, at their labels. They've got these cows. And so this, these cows, or the imagery of the cows, have been, um, been a good, strong branding tool for them. So they're using it um, with with their Facebook cover and they're pairing it with their marketing materials. And so again, in their profile or their icon, they've used just their logo. So please be aware of what other companies are doing out there so that you know exactly where to place your elements. Okay, there's another company called Tesco. They use its Facebook page to show their softer side, to really try and appeal to their core target market. And they want people to feel at home on their page. And so they're, they've included everyday pictures of families and food and home, and they're trying to make it feel like just another social, uh, another friend's personal profile, basically. Uh, but again, they put their business logo in the icon right down here in the bottom left. So. This is this is good. We kind of see a pattern here. Even Nestle puts their logo in that Facebook icon. So again, when you're asked to create four different Facebook covers, you're changing the cover or the ad, the, the photo behind the icon, but the icon should remain the same. You shouldn't have four different icons. Just, um, just one icon with your logo in it, and then the, the background is what will change. This is kind of neat. They've done a collage with just a different style product placement for Nestle. 
Nestle started pretty badly on Facebook with a couple of um, candles around its page, but it's clearly started improving the design to give it a really family feel. And I think they've accomplished that with this look here. Look at a few more and we'll start designing our own. This is Mr. Tato. Um, this is an Irish crisp brand and they have a great way of showing off its entertainment park and the latest things that are happening there through their cover photo designs. And so for instance, we've got House of Horrors. This is being promoted for uh, the months of October and November. So very fitting for our fall that's around the corner. And um, they've not put their logo in the profile icon, but they did put it in their, their cover. So they kind of did it the other way around. There's no rule that says you have to put your, your logo here, but I, I recommend it because it makes it stand out. Cadbury, this is one of the most iconic chocolate brands in the world, and its page just oozes class. It's very uh, refined, and it makes you want to run out and go buy a bar immediately because it's, uh, it looks delicious. Um, again, they've used their profile picture to be part of their cover photo, which I think is extremely clever. It just looks like it's popping off the page, but they, again, have put their logo here. Obviously, it's on their product. They've done a good job of making it stand out. I think this is a very, very cool um, Facebook cover, photo, and icon. This is a, more of the technology side instead of food and drink, but Nokia has a gorgeous page. It just fits in with the operating system on their new phones by showing off the various tiles and icons, and um, I think it's just a really well done uh, Facebook page. I have an, uh, a Nokia, and so, in fact, I think I have this phone, but this is this is the exact interface of what it looks like. So they've kind of coupled this with with the um, Facebook cover. I think it's just beautifully designed. They've got nice white space here at the top. They've included their Windows Phone um, text here at the bottom, but their logo they made it stand out as part of one of the tiles. Beautifully done iTunes. How many of us are familiar with iTunes? Do you use iTunes? I use iTunes. Almost everyone I do know uses iTunes in one way or another. Um, if you're not familiar with iTunes, we know it's just a just a huge music library where you can go buy, download music, albums, uh, movies, TV shows, whatever you, any kind of media, books, um, what have you. But iTunes is one of, is the one-stop shop for music. And as you would expect, the cover photo features some of their best artists and lots of reasons to buy more tracks. And so they're promoting their albums. It is a collage. They've kind of done this uh, layering effect. I think it's just really clever uh, what they've done. But again, they put their logo here in the icon spot to make it stand out. So people know what this what this is, and with you guys, I noticed a lot of you kind of abbreviated the logo or the company name, or you just did the icon. You absolutely have to have a combination mark um, in your logo. I think that uh, it's imperative because affordable lawn care, or Megan Ren Jewelry, or the Laughing Giraffe Boutique, whatever logo you just company you decided to go with, this is a startup company, so it's not good to start abbreviating. Um, it's not good to start um, just using the, the icon, the standalone. You need to have a combination mark where you've got the icon and the letter mark, um, this, or the word mark. So you need to have, have the both elements there. So please remember to do that. But in case, in this case, iTunes, Pepsi, Coke, they've been around for forever, so they can get away with, with the, just the icon. Okay, Diesel. So Diesel, I picked this because anyone who's gone with the boutique, the children's boutique, I imagine it being more clothes and um, accessories uh, is usually what's sold at a boutique. So I wanted to show something in the retail fashion industry. But Diesel is an iconic fashion brand who like to show off some of their latest looks on their cover photos and sort of treat it like a shop window, okay, where they're, it's almost like peeking into their store, seeing the mannequins all dressed up. And um, what's neat is they also made their icon part of the picture. 
And then they just added the logo here at the bottom. I think it's just so cleverly done. Very, very clean layout. Here's another clothing brand, um, Marks and Spencer, Ireland. It's another fashion brand who like to show off their latest looks on their cover photo and fit in with their profile picture. So they, again, they've done it so that the profile picture merges in or kind of flows into the cover photo. They've got their logo in there. I think it's just very well done. Okay, this company is called stylefish.ie. It's another fashion site who likes to show off the latest trends. Again, this was for those of you who chose the boutique side, just a different way of laying things out. They show the latest trends on its cover photo by combining the new looks and the new outfits, just trying to stay current. So, are there any questions so far? Some of these companies I've never shopped at or seen, but they've got really cool uh, cover layouts. Here's another one, this one's Chloe. It's one of the most iconic fashion brands around, as you would probably expect. It has a really, what I like about it is it's really clean, elegant, it's very classy. So this probably um, is communicating the vibe that the, sh the store, uh, or the target market of, that the store has. So it's, um, it's just kind of a very clean way. Again, they just put the logo in their, in their uh, icon. So anyways, we've, we've kind of looked a few different kinds of Facebook covers, and hopefully this was helpful in kind of envisioning what it is that you're doing. Um, when you're doing your assignment, you'll create four, four different ones it, for the same company, okay? But your icon should stay the same, more or less. You might not need to change it. You shouldn't need to change it. So, Facebook wants your page cover photo to be a very eye-catching photograph and not an advertisement or a wordy graphic. So there are rules to Facebook, and we call it the 20% text rule for the Facebook ads, where, and there's even, um, the they call it text rule uh, testers or compliance testers where you can upload your Facebook cover or your Facebook ad and it will tell you if you are um, above the 20% text rule or below it. And there's a website here that you can check out to show you exactly what it is. But the, basically there's a few rules, but the only rule that you really need to remember is that for the Facebook cover photos, there is a 20% text limit in that if you go into their um, terms and conditions or their the Facebook rules, they'll go over what that means. But for you, you just need to remember that the Facebook cover is not a common image size. Uh, it's a very rectangular composition. It includes a cutout for your profile icon in the lower left corner. But this means that the best looking cover photos tend to be the images that are designed to take advantage of the photo's exact size and shape. And because they want to put emphasis on cool photography or the, the branding aspect, they really limit you to, um, to, to text, okay? These rules are directly aimed at deterring a few techniques that are, are still being used on Facebook pages. Specifically, a pages cover photo may not encourage people to upload um, personal timelines. They, include price or purchase information, maybe 40% off or downloaded at this website. They include contact information, like your website address, email, mailing. Um, they can't include references to Facebook features or actions. They can't include calls to action, such as get it now or tell your, so in a sense, it's more branding, but it's not an ad. So we just kind of have to think of it like that, and hopefully that's not too confusing. But when Facebook announced the timeline for pages, in 2012, they also updated their Facebook page terms with new guidelines, and there's a whole list of them, but basically we want to remember this specific one. Um, you need to remember that you have to keep your, your text limit. What does that mean? Well, that means if you pull it into a grid, and I forget the, 
forget the grid size, but you can create a grid and if it extends, if it goes, if there's more text in more than three of the squares, then it's um, beyond the 20% text limits. You have to remember to keep it within. I was, I was designing some ads for um, a company and I had to do Facebook ads, believe it or not. So I had to go to this website I used quite a bit where you can just upload your image and it will tell you if you're beyond the 20% rule. So it made my life a little easier. I did, I did have to set up a grid system, but um, for the most part, it was pretty easy to just double check myself. Here's some other rules that you might want to pay attention to. These are more promotional rules. The Facebook cover photo rules are no contact information, um, you can't put email, phone numbers, anything about social networking. You can't send other website links. Can't do promotions, no deals, uh, contests or special offers. And then obviously you can't like to encourage, um, like like our graphics or, or or anything like that. So you need to be careful what you put in your in your photo cover, but you can put your services. You can put cool imagery. You can put your logo your company name or maybe the motto like Pepsi did life is good I mean that that's their motto that's what they're, they're using to brand themselves with so you can do something like that you just can't say hurry to stores now or ten, four for ten dollars you know it, you can't put anything like that no deals all right and then Facebook released the tool for testing which I um, put here if you want to check it out it's more for the Facebook ads. They do have Facebook cover tools that you can just Google, and that will, and it'll pull something up. But um, I encourage you to kind of pay attention to that. Now, although Facebook page terms state that you can't include contact information, calls to action, discounts, or price information, Facebook kind of left the door open for businesses to include other attention grabbing copy and fine print. So for example, you could use a company tagline like Pepsi did. I mean, go back here. Their company tagline is, uh, oh, live for now. That said not life is good. Live for now, that was their, their tagline. Um, it's just a short phrase that kind of explains what your business does. You can include an impactful word that embodies your brand. Like, let's see. I don't know if any of these companies had an impactful word. Oh, this one did. I mean, this one had attitudes in exhibition, so they were just trying to kind of put words with uh, adjectives with their with their vibe. Um, inspiring quote. You could have that. Names of people in your photo. Did Nestle do that? I'm not sure if they did, but they did have. Nestle kind of had a collage of people, so you could put photos up. Photographic credits are welcome and image copyrights, obviously. But just kind of make sure that as you're selecting quality images, um, images are really a powerful way to create an emotional state. So your page's cover photo really should embody the essence of your brand. So you want to use, you want to use uh, high quality photographs that are in focus have a balanced color, good lighting. You wanna use photo editing software to optimize your images, like Photoshop can kinda of help you do some tweaks or some effects if you want. You can design an image collage or use a big one, or a big beautiful photograph. Just, if you wanna go Nestle's route and just do a collage, or, or even, what was this one, Tesco did a collage. Even iTunes did a collage, and there's all different kinds of collages. But, or you could just do one large image, like Sprite or Ben and Jerry's. It's up to you. This is your client, this is your customer, but the company logo should appear somewhere, and it's usually in your profile icon, like we talked about. In which case, it is not needed as an extra graphic in your cover photo. You don't need to have it in both places, so I would say have it in one or the other. Uh, if you plan to include text, consider its placement when you're selecting images. You want it to be visible. You don't want it to be overlapping. If your background is very busy, then you probably don't want to have text um, or make it extremely large that is legible. So be, be aware of the size of your font. Again, kind of go back to your advertise, design and advertising classes if you've had any and apply those rules here. 
Um, so here's a, a few image content ideas that are, are good for your brand. You can use candid photos of customers enjoying the product. Um, you can, your most popular products, icons of awards that are won, employees in action, company founders, uh, shirt, uh, let's see, store interior or exterior, and then branded vector graphics. So that's, uh, that's where we're at with that. So it looks like we can take our 10 minute break here. We'll come back and we'll start designing some Facebook pages because some Facebook covers and icons. So we'll go ahead and take our 10 minute break and then when we return, we'll start designing. Are there any questions, Lisa, before we go on? Did you want to go over any assignments or anything? Or your final project? Okay, if not, we'll go ahead and um, take our break here and we'll come back and start designing.
All right, so let's finish up our, our lecture and jump right into the design. So let's, you know what, let's just do the design part because that's, that's the most fun. I'll pull up my illustrator and we'll go over how to set up your document. Go ahead and get your illustrator up, Lisa, is yours up? I really encourage you to work alongside me. Let me get everything arranged here so you can see what I'm doing. Close up some of these. Why did my screen? Okay. Pull in my toolbars. I think we've got everything. Okay, so there's some options. You were asked to do some logo designs. There are tons of different logo designs we went over. So depending on the company, you're probably going to want to, obviously the industry, you'll want to take a different approach with each one. And I'll do some designs for each one so that we, we know, um, we have kind of a good idea. So let's try the affordable lawn care. Since Lisa's here, today and that's her company. I'm gonna go ahead and do a demo on how to do a Facebook cover for lawn care. I found this cool photo at, uh, just on Google Images. If you go to, and I might be a good place to start is actually show you how to find the photos and how to look for a good photo. All right, let me go to Google real quick. Let me pull up my screen. Let's see, Google, there we go. Can you guys see this? All right. So if I was looking for landscaping for my affordable lawn care, I could do um, landscaping photos, and then click on images, the images tab here, and it'll pull up a whole slew of different kinds of landscaping images. What, what I suggest is go to search tools, and you wanna click on size. You want at least medium or large. Obviously large, it will not be pixelated. And then what I want you to do is uh, you can probably look at, um, you can sort it from type if you don't want clip art in there. Um, you can do color if you're looking for black and white, transparent, all that, all that jazz. Uh, more tools, show sizes. This will give the sizes here at the base. You want something that's at least over 800 pixels because that's the width of your photo. Um, you can tr you can size down or prop any of these images, but you want to make sure you pick a really clean photo, good lighting, good color. Um, just pick a good quality image. This is a really cool photo. I, I like this one a lot. Um, shows the wheelbarrow landscaping services. Anyways, I picked four uh, photos already beforehand, but I'll let you have a chance to just kind of look on Google for your industry, the type of photos there are. You could even show a picture of someone in there doing the actual landscaping, maybe just a field of grass, and you could do a really cool, in fact, I'll probably pull this one down because I like this photo a lot. Click on um, view image, I'm just gonna click and drag it to my desktop. All right, so now that I have a few photos that I want to, to use, I'm going to go back to my Illustrator. Let's do that. Okay, and let's set up our, our document. So I do recommend doing this in Illustrator. Some Facebook covers are done in Photoshop, but because you have to create a multi-page PDF, including your logos and including the Facebook covers, you will need to do this in Illustrator in order to, to do that. So please do your assignment in Illustrator. And let's go to File, New. And we're gonna stick with the dimensions that we just went over on, on uh, for the Facebook cover. 851 pixels wide, 315 pixels tall. And we want this to be horizontal landscape. On your units of measurement, please make sure it says pixels, not picas. Those are totally different and you'll get a completely different result. So click, make sure that pixels is check marked. Number of artboards, you need at least four, right? Four artboards. And along here is the orient, or is kind of the grid by column, like which way do you want to see your artboards displayed? But I'll just do four side by side, so I'll keep that selected. Um, you don't need much of a bleed. In fact, we can take the bleed off. Just make sure that your photo goes to the edge and hit OK. 
So now I've got my four Facebook cover templates ready to go. Remember the size of the profile picture that we talked about? We'll, we'll go over that, I guess, later once we get our design down. But let's do this affordable landscaping, okay? Um, let's do the cover first. I'm going to go ahead and pull in some of my photos that I pulled off the internet earlier. I'm just going to throw them all in here. One, let me shrink this down. Got this one, this one, and then this tiny one here. If your photo looks pixelated at all, and you're sure it's a large high res photo, click on right click on a range, or I'm sorry, right click on. Oh, this one might not be so usable. I might have to get a different photo. I'll grab a different one. Here we go. There it is. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna leave some white space here at the top. I want my photo to go to the very edge on the left and right, I'm going to size my photos down, kind of get them lined up where you'd like. Remember, hold down shift as you click and drag to keep your proportions constrained. This one looks like it has kind of a border. I don't think I want border, so I'm going to get rid of that one. I'll pull in a different photo here. So I'll do three photos. Group them. Get them nice and wide. Okay. And uh, next, I probably want to grab a nice background. So I'm going to go back to Google. Do a new share here. I'm looking for texture. Okay, and I'm just a background for my Facebook cover would be nice. I like this one a lot. This one's really neat. Um, I'm just going for something that kind of adds a little something to the background. Something that's earthy because this is a, a lawn care company. I liked this first one. Even, I do like, we'll just, oh, that one has a logo on it, so we probably don't want that. Uh, let's see. This is kind of a cool background. Rustic paper with the panels, or even this. It's kind of cool. I'll do the panels. So I'll go to view image, click and drag it off your desktop or you can right click and hit save as. Let's see if that's saved. Okay, let's go back to our illustrator once I've found the, the background that I want. Let's see if it saved it for me. There it is. I'm gonna put this towards the back. Now you're probably asking, well, your photo is too big. How do you get it to how do you get it to stay stay cropped? So what I'm going to do is we're going to do a basic um, clipping mask. Once you send, I'm going to send my image to the back because it's going to be a background. Because if you see, if I tried to squeeze it up to fit my artboard, um, if it was any other picture, it would look misproportioned. 
So you don't want to do that. You never want to mess with the proportions of a photo and squeeze it. It just, it doesn't look that great. In this case, I could get away with it because it's just paneling, but let's pretend it was an actual photo that we needed to resize to the, to the photo cover artboard. So we're gonna grab a rectangle tool, we're gonna click and drag to the size of the artboard itself. We wanna take off no, no fill, no stroke. We want a transparent fill and stroke. And then you're gonna highlight the images that you want constrained within that rectangle. And then click clipping mask, right click, click clipping mask. Okay. If you need to edit what's inside, you'll just double click. That will allow you to do that. There we go. Trying to find a good placement for it, these panels. This looks good. Just like that. All right. Um, I kind of want this paper to line up with, you see this, this, uh, this picture here, before it was over here, and it's just kind of throwing my eye off, so I'm gonna line it up. So it all lines up flush. There we go. All right. I'm just trying to see where it would look best lined up. Probably like that. Okay, so now that I have my photo, I'm gonna get rid of this one because we don't need that one right now. Let's see here. God, I'm gonna close out of my Google, close out of my PowerPoint. All right. Okay, so now we want to kind of make a cool, maybe some cool tabs. You could grab your rectangle tool. I'll zoom in here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna draw a rectangle tool. I'm gonna create what's called a banner. And I'm going to get the star tool. I'm just going to click once on my artboard. Three points makes a rectangle. So I'll give the rectangle a color. For instance, the fill I want to give it is green. And I start green. And then this triangle, I'll give it white so that I can see at uh, Hold down shift and rotate. I'm gonna expand my triangle. Here we go, so now this creates the banner. Remember how we do the, the minus front? We're gonna go to window, grab your Pathfinder tool, and we're gonna use our shape mode, minus front. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna select our objects first, and then click on minus front. So now, this is a, a banner, okay? I'm gonna use this banner. Oops. To place here, right next to my photo. And I'm gonna grab some text, click and drag. And I'll type in landscaping. These are just gonna be things that my company can do for you. Uh, affordable lawn care, things affordable lawn care can do. Type uppercase. I'll use Arial. 
And I want a white font, a reverse text background so that it stands out. I'm gonna place it right over here on the banner. I want somewhat large font so it stands out. And you might consider bolding it because you've got a lot of green in your pictures and you just want something. Or you can do, I'll grab the, the color of your background so that it stands out a little bit more. So it might be like an off-white would look nice. All right. I can do uh, something even more. I can give it even more detail. If I copy my banner, I'm gonna hold down Alt Option, click and drag. I'm gonna bring it in here. like that and I'm going to give it a stroke no fill and I'm going to give it a really kind of a unique stroke let's see what we can do here for the stroke I'm going to grab this off white whoops So as you can see, I'm giving it some detail. It doesn't necessarily need to have all of that, but it adds a little something to it. it, makes it stand out a little bit more. So once I've done one of them, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste. Control C, Control V on your keyboard will help make that job a lot easier. Again, I'm gonna paste. Try to get it nice and lined up. All right. This one isn't exactly touching my photo, so I want to make sure I get it really close. So landscaping, what's another thing we do? Um, I'm going to stop share for just a minute. For some reason, my photo is not working. I'm going to bring it to pull up. Okay, let's see. Cardscapes is another word. Make this uppercase. Change that word so it matches. Uh, and so uh, let's do and still fish. There we go. So these are some of the, the features that I'm going to have. Um, you know what? I might even. Okay, so I like where I'm going here. This is all I really need to do. I'm just promoting my services. I'm using these cool little um, banners to, to kind of give it some detail. Now, if I wanted to go in and really give it some more detail, I could highlight the, the dark green banner, not the border banner. And I could go into Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. If you click the Preview button here at the bottom left, it will kind of give you a preview of what's happening here. And I can increase the opacity, kind of change the offset a little bit. I'm 
going to tighten the blur on here. Here we go. Okay, so now I've given it a drop shadow, which kind of gives it a 2D effect where it's popping off the, the background a little bit. And because the green, dark green blends in so much with the other green background, this dark drop shadow will allow it to kind of pop off the page, which makes it stand out, which is what I want. Okay, next I'm going to grab my type tool and I'm gonna wanna give it some information, like the address maybe where I'm located. Um, And I don't want all caps, so I'll go back up to my type, change case, sentence case. Give it a zip code and a phone number. And then, uh, what is it, affordable lawn care? Give it a on a website. All right, then I'll center that. I will go regular on this one. I'm on a small font. And I will pick this dark green. It seems to be working really well. And it will also stand out really nicely. Oops. Double click on the text. Might adjust the size slightly. Here we go. All right, so now we've got the address. Now, I, I probably might want this address to be smaller on the smaller side, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back down to 10. Reason being is I want what's in my flat, or my banners to stand out a little bit more, and I want the, the address to be kind of like an afterthought. All right, and then this wood panel would be a perfect place to put my logo, or I could put it also, or uh, my icon in the profile. I'm sorry, I could put my, my logo icon in the Facebook icon profile place. So let's create our profile icon square. Grab your rectangle tool, click once anywhere on your screen, and then you will need to, to tell it how many pixels. And remember it was 180 by 180. Hit OK. So it gives you your perfect square. It usually kind of hangs off the page slightly shrink it down just a little bit and I'm not going to give that any I'm gonna give it a white so the borders you're gonna to want to give it about the two-point border and the border is usually gray so I'm gonna give it a gray border All right, so this is where I'm gonna put my, my logo. So I'm gonna go grab my logo. Any one of these should do. I grab this one. This one looks about right. And I'm gonna put it right here. I'm going, actually, I'll show you what we're gonna do with this. So be a good segue into creating a black and white version. This is going to be white. Oops. I grab this. I put it inside my profile box. Just like that. So that's my logo or my icon. And I'm going to put my logo here. What I could do actually is I could make this 
white font, so it stands out on the background. We get a little bold so you can read it. Or maybe just larger. Just like there you go. I could even add a drop shadow to it. Go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. And I can increase my blur, the preview. Darken my opacity here. There we go. So now it pops off the page just as much as anything else. And I'm going to grab the entire logo and put it here. Now I could probably what I could do too, um, I don't like how my logos are side by side. So what I'm gonna do is switch this, the direction of my photo. Do a quick swap here of my background. Like this. Send it back. All right, that's more like it. Bring this over. I'm gonna grab the elements. Oops. I'm gonna grab my logo. This is gonna go right here. I'm gonna line up that photo. much as possible, this part right here where the edge of the photo lies. I want it to lie flush, perfect. All right, that looks much better. Okay, and now I'll change this back to green. So as you can see, you might wanna you're going to have to change things up anyways. I'll go ahead and remove that drop shadow since um, it no longer, uh, we no longer need it. So what I'll do is I'll copy. I'll drop the text box. Because it shows up just fine as it is. And I'll grab my logo and I'll put it over here. I'll kind of center it so it's easy to see. I'm making it nice and big. Shrink it down just a little bit. I want it big, but I don't want it bigger than my photo over here. I want there to be some space. All right, so that is my Facebook cover. Again, there is no real rule about placement. It's kind of up to you what you think would be best. I might make this a little bigger. So that's my Facebook cover. It's pretty detailed. Um, if we want to make a simpler one, let's do a simpler one. You don't feel like going through all that effort and making all those banners. Um, I think it looks nice, so we'll keep it. But let's do another one just for.
for kicks. Okay, so let me find a photo. I found a really cool photo of the, just the green. Let's see if I can see it. I have to go back on Google and grab it. Put it on my desktop. Now I don't see it. Okay, I'll run back to Google. Let's see. Here we go. Let's go back to Google. I'll find landscaping. There's landscaping photos, images. And then I was looking for something pretty simple, like just grass. I'm not quite sure where I saw. Oh yeah, we went to more, or search tools, size, a lot large. There it is, a picture of just manicured grass. Thanks, Lisa, I appreciate it. I'm just, I'm gonna do a simpler one, so if we, if one, if you don't have time, that, that wouldn't necessarily work really well. Let's do a simpler one, okay? Where this one is just the background. Okay, so you saw how I found this large photo, just green, green grass. Pull it in there, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is grab my profile icon, right here. Now you can choose to keep it the same, or you can choose to, oh, I'm gonna take out the, I'm gonna transparent fill, so it's just, you know, the logo if you wanted. But I don't like that because you can't see it very well. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm actually gonna put my logo in there. Here is where a horizontal logo would come in handy because, or I'm sorry, a vertical logo because I want it to stand out as much as possible. And when it's horizontal, I have to make it pretty small to fit in that tiny square. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm trying to make it as large as possible. Go. I'm just trying to center it and make it as big as it'll let me go without it touching the edges. Okay, so now my my logo is placed. Just like that. And then I probably want a saying or something. Uh, I can grab my banner. You can do it two different ways. You could do it this way where you do a banner going across. It lets me grab it. I'm gonna click a right click, bring to front. I don't like that. This isn't flow. Let's just grab the type tool. What's a motto that we can come up with for, uh, come up with something. What's a tagline we can use? Affordable lawn care. Why pay more, or you can do, um, oh, I know. Cut above the rest, how about that one? Clever, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna do uppercase on this one. I'm gonna use the same uh, font as in my logo to tie it all in. And I'm going to make it quite large, 
I'm going to use, I don't want a lot of text because remember that 20% well cared for grass is happy grass. There you go. That's a good, that's a good um, tagline. I'm going to go to type create outlines. This way I can adjust it better. I'm going to center it right over this. I want what I'm doing here is if you notice the A is lying flush. See my smart guide lying flush with my profile icon. And I'm going to increase it so that it's center there. And then I might pull in my icon. Like that and that kind of makes it look really simple um, so you can go as as complicated as you want as detailed as you want to make it look like an ad or you can do something very simple um, again it might be hard to see this so I might need to fill it in um, let's see if I can do that real quick I'm just going to take a copy of this this is a quick and dirty way of doing it I'll take a copy put it right behind it I'm going to change it to white, take off the stroke, and send it back. Actually, you know what? I'll just grab the rounded rectangle tool and I'll draw so it's white on the back so you can see it. Let's see if we like that any better. We'll send that back. I'll have to tweak the corners a little bit, but you get the idea. So we'll see if we like that any better. Make that any, uh, even smaller. The idea is I don't want it to be bigger than the font itself. Yeah, so very simple. There's no advertising or promotion here. I could even add the website, which might be helpful because I have no contact information whatsoever on here. And this is my opportunity, like we talked about, it's prime real estate, so it's our opportunity to promote it as best we can. So I'm gonna grab, and do a reverse text again. And I'm gonna place this website here. Try to make it stand out. I'll give it a lighter green color, more of this yellow. Let's see if it, no, it doesn't show up. So we're not going to use it. I really want my text to show up. So I'm going to line it up. I'm going to go type, create outlines. And I'm going to make sure that it lines up. With my icon and I might want to give it a drop shadow so I'm going to go to effect stylize drop shadow now be careful with drop, drop shadows that you don't go too crazy with them what I need to do is get it so that my drop shadow is visible okay so I can actually see the website so this is a very simple, clean. Thanks, Lisa, for coming. We appreciate you. Hopefully this helps. Uh, come tomorrow if you're already prepared to go over the assignment. Uh, if you want me to review your final, now's the time. And we'll do that tomorrow. Anyways, here is another simple layout. And imagine if this was jewelry or if this was a children's boutique. You can go as complicated or as simple as you want. 
So here is an example. I don't think you need anything else. Another thing you could do could make this really big, could make it white. Whoops. And then you could do the transparency. I'm gonna make it nice and big. So it frames my website like this. And then I'm going to change my opacity. I'll bring my text to the front. Or you have it sit right over. But actually, to be honest, I don't really like that, so we're not going to do that. I'll just go back to the way I had it. Back up. Control Z will be your best friend. There you go. So uh, let's do one more. Let's see what we've got time for. We've got time for one more. Let's try a uh, children's boutique, shall we? I grabbed these photos earlier to try to make work. So we can either do a collage or I'm probably not going to do that one. Um, I found a photo online that I really liked. Let's do a jewelry one. Actually, that might be a little quicker. The boutique one will take some time. So I found this jewelry photo. Now, if you find a photo with a, a website already on it, you're going to have to take it into Photoshop and uh, Photoshop that out. For sake of time, I'm not going to do that for this class. I'll, I'll redo this tutorial tomorrow. But I'm going to have a nice, beautiful background color that's showcasing my jewelry. I'm going to grab my, whoops. Grab my profile picture, right click, arrange, bring to front. Let me go grab my jewelry logo. Let's see what which one would be fitting. Let's try. I'll try this one. I'm going to this one. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this purple one. I'll zoom in here. Oops. And I, a word to the wise, you probably want to make sure that you've already edited or completed your logo design before you pull it in to do this because by doing that, um, it's going to be very hard if you're working with an unedited uh, logo. Like this one. This one's unedited. I haven't finalized it. Probably should. I'm going to space out these words a little bit to give some contrast. we go. I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to bring this down. Bring it in. I create outlines. This way I can line it up with my lines. All right, and then I've got my icon. I really want to showcase this, so I'm going to center it like that. Highlight all of it. Okay. Now so that I've done that, um, oh, let me take this off. 
Here we go. I could add my website like we've done here, or I can. Um, I do recommend putting some sort of text or some design element on there. Um, let's see. Let's grab this here. Maybe my icon will be a good, a good starting point. You have a good strong icon. Be very helpful. Zoom in here, see what I've done. Let's highlight these. Well, for sake of time, we'll just move on. Make this bigger. I also change the color if I need to match the color. something like that um, I do recommend maybe doing a tagline this probably needs to be a cleaner background I can expand it move it over I do want more of a cleaner background this probably might be too busy to use I'll go grab that other one let's do a different one let's grab this one it's already got the one on there so this has a really nice tagline. What I can do Oops. Let me zoom in here. I'm going to grab my icon. I'm thinking this really nice design. Now I find a place to put it because I want to tie in my icon with my logo. Just like that. So I'm kind of tying in tying in that. Um, I come up with a good um, tagline for this, and it's a very simple. So for the jewelry one, I probably recommend finding a cleaner background photo, photo where you can put text because you you definitely want to explain um, how you're different from the competition. Uh, but this about concludes our lecture for today. We'll stop here. I'll continue. I'll do some more tomorrow more demonstrations bring your final assessment to class even if it's not finished so we can go over it ask me questions get some feedback because this is probably your last chance to do so and um, be happy to help you want to email me I'm happy to help that way as well let me know if you have any questions after watching this hopefully everything worked out and um, I will see you guys tomorrow at the same time thanks for coming <laughs>